Reintegration means... So reintegration to me means... Healing and forgiveness of the person. The opportunity to uh, become... Productive, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens. A second chance. Applying yourself after all this dead time to go out there and the world has changed. Helping me better myself and get back into the community as a better person. So I would call it reintegration hope for a person like me. I'm Anita Selvage and I'm a VR counselor with Creek Nation Book Rehab. The reintegration program started because of the need that we saw as a vocational rehab. We had such a difficult time placing felons. They were coming out of prison, falling through the cracks. They had no supports in place. There were stricter rules about hiring felons than there is today, and we, we would lose them. I tried to go to work at an animal shelter shoveling uh, dog feces and they said no I can't hire you because you're a felon and it makes it real easy to to revert to crime and so I caught another charge a couple of things we need to talk about is our new vehicles we have my career lasted in corrections approximately eight years so with that I was able to really get a glimpse of what people go through when they're incarcerated and one of the most important things I learned was is these guys are, and gals are people too. They're just like me, there's no difference. The only difference is they have a felony conviction and I don't. So I thought, you know what, we, what we can do is we can change our way of thinking. What makes the public more safe? Is it turning these people out onto the streets with nothing and hopelessness and despair play a huge role in them committing crimes and going back in? Or can we set a program up such as this that helps them along the way? You have to understand how um, Muskogee people are as far as accepting you back. They know that you've made a mistake, but even though you've made that mistake, it's a forgiving thing. Let's, let's take you back, you're part of us. You know, there's been so many people turn their backs and they've turned their backs because of the things we've done. You know, we burnt them bridges, uh, but the reintegration program is here. They don't care about them bridges that we burnt. They're here to try to build new ones for us. We have, in Oklahoma, there's 33 correctional facilities scattered throughout the state. So as long as we've identified a citizen that's eligible for our program, then we will either go to them, we will talk to them on the phone, we will work with their case management at the, at the prison, and we will start the process that way. Once an inmate here gets involved in the program, we like to see a seamless reintegration process into the community. What we don't want them to happen is, is that we put them on a bus and give them $50. Everybody loses in that scenario. Whereas if we have somebody from the community who happens to be Native American, comes and picks up that individual, takes them and immediately introduces them to a structured environment that is supportive of that person, it has to increase their odds of success. What do you think that a, a victim is going to want to see? They're going to, that's human nature, they're going to want that revenge. They want to see justice. The victim impact class is a 13 week course. It helps the client um, learn exactly how their crime affects other people. A sincere apology from a person would be the first step in the road to recovery. Unless you are sincere about it and you truly mean it, because if I go up to you and I say, I'm sorry, and I walk off and I go back and do it to someone else, do you think I'm really sorry for no, what I just did? No. Without these programs, a lot of the times the guys don't know what to do when they get out and uh, they don't have any idea how to, you know, stay out. Once they're released, they have to come back and live within our boundaries. We have eight counties, eight full counties, and parts of three others that, that make up our jurisdictional area. Hey, hey what's up, Roger? Hey, come on in, man. How's it going? Everything's What's up, man? How are you? We basically develop a client plan with them. They do have to pass a drug screening, and so they have to be a Creek citizen. And if, as long as we're there within two years of um, incarceration, they can get started with this. 
The reintegration program provides the basic necessities that everybody needs. Say we'll provide a housing allowance, food, clothing. So once we get them stabilized within the, within the community, then we look at long range goals. Can they work? Is there any support structure out there for them in place? When I showed them my release papers and my, my Indian nationality card and everything, and they, was, they just took action. That same day, they got me in a place and got shelter over my head. I was gone, I was gone almost 14 years in prison. So when I came home, my kids were grown. How you put it? They, they were on their own so long, basically, you know, with their mother, uh, that my, my, my words wasn't no authority in their life, really. So I come for counseling and, uh, you know, to get things right. We also do job placement. We're always going to different uh, workforce sites and trying to see where we can find more employment, more felon-friendly jobs. The employer knows that somebody is there working. It's not them by themselves, that somebody is supporting them along the way, whether it be making sure they're the work on time. If they need steel toe boots, we'll provide that. If they need a hard hat, if they need glasses, if they need tools, we can go out and we can get that. We ask that our, our clients uh, keep in contact with us once a week so that we can be sure that they are on track. We do call their probation officers on a regular basis to make sure that they're checking in. I have called a few jobs and, you know, make sure that they're coming in and showing up. The requirements of my probation are no drinking, no drugs, no alcohol. And sometimes it's just a phone call that they'll make to you and say, hey, I'm, I'm having a bad day, I don't think I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, and it's right at that point that, that you have to step in and give your best advice and say, look, no, we're not quitting now, there's no quitting here, you know, we're not through with you and you're not through with us, we're going forward with this. My name is Allison McCall. I work for Muskogee Creek Nation Family Violence Prevention. I have seven felonies. Um, they just kind of spiraled one right after the other. Um, I was sentenced to a year in county in 2012, and I did half of that, and I got out and reoffended. I went back in December of 2012. My whole experience um, took a big toll on my family. My mom, um, she suffered a heart attack while I was in prison. It would just, it would tear me up when I would have to go see her. And just wondering, you know, what went wrong? Just what went wrong? We had a health fair the first year that I was incarcerated and the reintegration program was there. And I got some information from them and I held onto that form for the three years that I had spent there. In regards to Allison, um, her needs were Fairly basic at first, you know, clothing, uh, groceries, transportation. The reintegration program just stepped right up to the plate and provided food for the table and Christmas gifts for the children. They are very good about helping get you started on the right track and they gave me leads on jobs and I searched leads on my own as well. I think looking at an applicant that has a, a history maybe of some criminal, criminal activity or incarceration, that it is normal maybe to have some sort of concerns. Certainly through our ability to meet with Allison, you know, it was very clear that she had not only um, personal experience but professional experience that would be an asset to our program. Muskogee Creek Nation is the fourth largest tribe in the United States, so our citizenship count is a little over 80,000 members. Being a tribal member matters a lot to me now because I didn't, I didn't ever consider myself, because I was a mix, so I didn't consider myself as part of the tribe, but they grasped me and embraced me and showed me love. We've heard the words of the people, by the people, and for the people. Uh, that's what this program represents. And so, you know, uh, it's, it's a program that is specific to Muskogee people. Culturally speaking, we have different needs. We react to the same situations differently than other cultures do. And I believe that that cultural gap is part of the reason for higher numbers of incarceration. Um, the Muskogee Creek Nation Reintegration Program has bridged those gaps. 
it goes to their identity, you know, and who they believe they are, you know, through their customs and their traditions and their values. Um, I know, and, that, and that's important. It's important for our young people. Unfortunately, uh, not all of our young people are getting that. You know, they're getting caught up in what's out there, and and uh, next thing you know, uh, they're incarcerated. Thursday, I'm taking a youth to Cookson Hills for a tour and hopefully get her in there and take her to get her information. Our reintegration program um, has an amazing juvenile worker right now in order to keep them out of adult incarceration and break those cycles. I think what inspired um, the reintegration to start the youth program was um, the high percentage of tribal kids that we have getting in trouble. So we are doing everything that we can to uh, prevent them from going into incarceration, um, into a shelter, into being a runaway. We have helped over 600 of our citizens in the 11 years um, make the transition from prison back into society. We have about a 91, 92% success rate. So that is after one year of service that they do not commit any crimes, uh, any new crimes, or they, you know, they stay out of, out of trouble. Community attitudes about prison in general and about reentry programs were pretty negative in the beginning. And a lot of it had to do with they just did not understand what it meant and what was going on. There, there may have been attitudes as, you know, why should we fund uh, individuals who have, who have uh, committed crimes against society. With the council, we just kind of had to go to them one by one and plead our case, you know, what, why there was such a need for this. It's not about dollars and cents, but it is. Um, on the back end, that can cost a lot of money, but the long-term investment in that citizen and their pride and their wholeness in the community is really where the payoff is. And, um, about 200 if you want to look for a bed or something, but if it's a little bit more. I, I found mean, a couch for like $89 at a store. Yes, yeah, perfect. We yeah. just need an invoice from them. So when I bring employees onto the reintegration program, I look for a number of different qualities, but the number one quality I look for is passion. You gotta have passion, you gotta have love in your heart for people, and you gotta wanna make a difference. My family was in and out of incarceration, uh, my father. Um, so I didn't really get to have the relationship that I desired with him. There were no programs like this back then. When I see uh, people walk into our office, I see mamas, I see daddies, you know, I see uh, just sisters, brothers, just just trying their best to do what they think, you know, is the next step into getting back on their feet to to have that life they're supposed to have. I'm gonna start working at McDonald's. It's about a mile away down that way, and uh, they're paying me a little more because I have experience. I'm not ashamed of my past. A lot of people are like, why do you tell people that you've been in prison? Why do you, why do you tell people that you um, were raped? Why do you tell people that you've lost a son? Why do you tell people that you've been in all these situations? Because I hope that somewhere that my story touches somebody. To me, it's just a flawless and seamless uh, transition. Reintegration means to me family love. Reintegration to me is accepting and understanding that everyone has challenges in life and can overcome those. Reintegration to me means to introduce people back into a society that embraces healing and forgiveness of the person. Reintegration um, to me is hope. It's new beginnings. It's life outside of prison. It's a new start. It's second chances, or third, you know, however many it takes, you know, it's just, um, it's amazing.